Well, I'd like to welcome you to lesson number two on the story of Jesus Christ from the four Gospels. And lesson number two is the early years. Hopefully you've already had a chance to watch lesson number one, but if not, you can get back to that at any time. Um, also, we would like you to receive all of these videos and also additional videos from other series that we are preparing. To do that, simply click on the little guy um, down at the bottom of the screen on the right-hand corner, and you will subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Let's get going. On the top of your screen, you'll notice that we have a time bar that shows different activities during the life of Christ in the time frame of this particular lesson. Currently, the arrow is underneath Jesus' travels to Jerusalem, the flight into Egypt, Jesus returns to Nazareth, Jesus visits Jerusalem. And we're going to take a closer look at some of this. Okay, now I've moved the time bar over to the left. I've given you a map on the right. And we're going to take a look at some of the activity and movement during the early days and years of Jesus Christ. His family was from Nazareth, which is up north near the Sea of Galilee, and you know that he was born in Bethlehem, um, near Jerusalem, just to the south. At a certain point, very early on in his life, Joseph, Mary were warned of God that it would be best that they leave Israel because King Herod plan to kill the child. Herod did not like the news that he had received from the three wise men concerning the king of the Jews that had been born and a star had appeared in heaven announcing this great and prophetic event. Herod was the king and he did not want any rivals to his throne. But when Herod was dead, um, once again, the Lord sent a messenger to Joseph and Mary and they were able to return back to their homeland. There's also um, early activity where Jesus was in Jerusalem from Bethlehem, just as a baby to be dedicated. And then he went back there yearly up until the time he was 12 years old. And at that point, we have more details of a very interesting incident. In the days of Mary's purification, according to the law of Moses, were accomplished. They brought Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. The same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. This old man was touched by the Spirit of God, and he had the confidence to know before he left this earth that he would see the promised Messiah. And no doubt he also was knowledgeable in Scripture to understand that Jesus was born right at the time the Bible prophesied that he should come. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asser. And she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, 84 years old, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayer night and day. And she, coming in that instant, gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. And when they had performed all these things according to the law of the Lord, they returned unto Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. You can imagine how Mary and Joseph felt about these events. They go into the temple with their newborn child, and two godly prophets come to them and say, this child is the one, this is the one we have been waiting for. Moving forward 12 years, 
and his people went every year to Jerusalem during the feast of the Passover. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast as they were accustomed. But they lost Jesus. And when the feast days were over, they returned. But the boy Jesus remained in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. Imagine they traveled with a large caravan, a family group, uncles, cousins, grandmas, grandfathers, children, all sorts of activity. And when the whole caravan is together and they all start off on donkeys, mules, and wagons, maybe a camel or two, everybody else thought everybody else was looking out for everybody else. You know how that can happen. And suddenly they said, hey, has anybody seen Jesus lately? No. Go find Jesus. Where's Jesus? And I can imagine the concern as they decided it's best to go back to Jerusalem and see if they can find the young lad. They could not find him, so they returned again to Jerusalem looking for him. After three days, three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the middle of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Even as a young child, Jesus was interested, knowledgeable, and amazingly fitted for study and the scripture. And all those who heard him were amazed at his wisdom and his answers. So he went down with them and came to Nazareth. It doesn't say if his parents had strong words for him or not. And he was subject to them. And his mother treasured all these words in her heart. And Jesus grew in his stature and in wisdom and in favor with God and men. Jesus had to study. Jesus had to learn. Even though he was a very special child. He was the Son of God, and the Spirit of God dwelt in him as the temple. As a human, as a young man, he had to be subjected to a family, to learning, to study, to being apprenticed in his father's business as a carpenter. And yes, Joseph, though not his earthly father, not his natural father, became very much his adopted father. Now we have the time bar back and we're going to move forward about from the 12 years, about 20 years. John the Baptist is a grown man. Jesus is a grown man. And John the Baptist and Jesus are going to meet at the Jordan River. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness to the light, or of the light, that all men through him might believe. He, John the Baptist, was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Crowds gathered around John, and they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I'm not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. They said unto him, Who are you? Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? These people had come to the Jordan River, probably under direction and instructions from the religious leaders or maybe even the political leaders, to find out who is this John the Baptist. And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as saith the prophet Isaiah, he said, I'm the fulfillment of an Old Testament prophecy that a man, a spokesman, a prophet is going to come just prior to the revealing of the Messiah. And John said, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the same John had his raiment or his clothing of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins and his meat or his food was locusts and wild honey. 
and then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. John became a celebrity, as it were, in Israel. People wanted to hear this man. They didn't have televisions, radios, the internet, social media. They loaded up the wagons, they hopped on their mules, they walked, they got to the Jordan, and when they got there, they would hear him preach strongly against the sins of the people, and he would tell them, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? The Pharisees and the Sadducees were two powerful religious groups in Israel at that time, and they typically would not have wanted to hear a message of repentance because they were very self-righteous and felt they had no need for such teaching. And John said, you need to bring forth some fruits, meat for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones, and he pointed to the rocks along the Jordan River, God can make children unto Abraham from these rocks, if he so desired. What a strong rebuke to these self-satisfied, self-serving religious hypocrites. And now also the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is chopped down, hewn down, and cast into the fire. He says, repent or perish. And then he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He said, there's somebody coming after me, and he is going to really change your life. If you think my message is powerful and strong and life-changing, wait until you hear the Messiah. John bear witness of him. And he cried, saying, This is he of whom I spoke. John saw Jesus coming down the road at the Jordan River. This is he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Even though John was older, even though John began his ministry first, he acknowledged that Jesus was from eternity, from eternal. He was God who had come to this earth as a man. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Powerful message for the Jewish people at that time who trusted in the law of Moses, because John is saying, we have something new for you, and it's grace, and it's truth, and it's in Jesus Christ. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He introduced him, not as king, not as Messiah, but as the sacrifice. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same saith he said unto me, Upon whom thou seest the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. Notice the message. Jesus is coming and he is going to give you the Holy Ghost. Let's take a closer look at the baptism of Jesus Christ by John. They went down into the river and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth Jesus into the wilderness. John testified that I saw the Spirit descending as a dove. And this was a sign 
specially given by God to John so that he would know he had baptized the Messiah. After this, Jesus goes into the wilderness south of Jerusalem, south of Bethlehem, where he was born, into the desert. He was driven there by the Spirit. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and 40 nights without food, Jesus was hungry. And the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. Jesus answered, The scripture says man cannot live on bread alone, but, by, but needs every word that God speaks. Then the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, back to the city they go. The holy city, he set him on the highest point of the temple, and he said unto him, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for the scripture says, God will give orders to his angels about you. They will hold you up with their hands, so that not even your feet will be hurt on the stones. Jesus answered, But the scripture also says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. The devil is tempting, and Jesus is resisting with Scripture. Then the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their greatness. All this I will give you, the devil says, if you kneel down and worship me. The devil claims to have control of the kingdoms of this world. And he offered it to Jesus, if Jesus would just acknowledge the kingship, the lordship, the authority of Satan. Jesus answered, go away, Satan. The scripture says, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. You got to make a choice. You're going to serve the Lord or you're going to serve the devil in his world. Jesus used scripture to settle that forever. After this, Jesus then returned to Galilee. And with that, we conclude lesson number two. Lesson number three will be the calling of the disciples. And hopefully there will be something for you to learn and it will be a blessing to you and your family.